it was uh, it was fascinating, you know, to uh, to kind of realize that this was uh, this had really happened. That you know, that someone had, uh, you know, over the course of 27 years, uh, had given over their business, had had pretty much ended all personal relationships with friends and family, and uh, and was left with. Uh, only one relationship in his life, and that's with his therapist and and the therapist's family, and um, and only to wake up one day and realize wh where had the time gone and w what was I thinking? Yeah, and when I, when I we first when I first listened to the podcast, I uh, I kind of listened to it in one fell swoop because yeah. much like binging a show, mm -hmm. I just I, I wanted to hear what was going to happen, and so uh, I got kind of sucked into it right away. I was shocked, but kind of like you were saying, but not not shocked ultimately. I think there's been so many stories that have been coming out of like Nexium or, you know, multi-level marketing things with these kind of charismatic leaders lately. And this just felt like that on a one-to-one -one level. Mm -hmm. um, so it was definitely shocking that it's a true story. Yeah. yeah, I had listened to the podcast while I was like speed walking around Poughkeepsie, New York. Details, details. <laughs> I like that detail. And I was just taken by it because I could really find myself or I could see how that how easy that could happen. That relationship between a therapist and a patient or client is so sacred and you really do just give that person your whole self and you trust them with your whole self. And so I could see how rich of a story um, Georgia Pritchett, our amazing writer, had to draw from for this. Well, I think there, I mean, it's, I, th I think we both were drawn to it because it's, uh, it's a rare story of, of what kind of has a lot of the same moves of, you know, for lack of a better term, like a buddy comedy. Um, but then it, the wheels come off very quickly, and it's uh, there's a lot of darkness there too. That is, it, it was just kind of fun to uh, to live in these two characters that get to go to to such different extremes. Yeah, I mean, it was certainly exciting for me to play somebody who had some real moral. Um, I would say ambiguity, but there really isn't much that's ambiguous about yeah. the uh, <laughs> morally yeah. questionable tactics of Ike. So uh, it was it was a fun role for you know a, cha a real challenge a challenge too. to play somebody yeah. that was l like what he's like, but then and and then also just externally, like it was it was like oh this is going to be a real character. So not to mention a real person, which is yeah. in its own challenge. Uh, for for my character, I think it's just so interesting for a woman who marries someone and she thinks he's kind of a god, really. And I mm. think I just tried to play her that he came into her life in a time when maybe she felt like she couldn't get maybe someone on his level. And then to just see his behavior and mm. how their relationship deteriorates over time. And she has to decide, like, do I really fully see what he's doing and what he's capable of? Or do I continue to kind of pretend everything's fine? I thought that was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, and for me, I think it was that she, you know, I was able to Zoom with Phyllis um, a couple of times. And for me, it was hard. The challenge was to be able to access that well of forgiveness that she has and strength for after 30 years, 30 years of abandonment by ostensibly your only family for nothing because of this other person what to what how does one live a life that's not completely burdened by resentment and anger and bitterness mm -hmm. and find like I joy <laughs> i know like find joy and new chapters and like allow to have a soft heart moving forward so that to me was like i learned a lot and um it, it was a really uh Definitely a, a ch challenge that I was like look, looking forward to jumping into because I couldn't see it at first. I was like, "How?" So I, um, she's amazing. Oh my gosh, I don't know really. I just sort of tried to put myself in the shoes of this woman and sort of use everything Georgia created since there wasn't a ton about my character in the podcast. And Georgia kind of came up with this 
kind of beautifully nuanced woman who I think can, is kind of heartbreaking, but mm. also I think there's something in her that, that also knows what's going on is wrong. And so there's some com, com, perhaps bit of her being complicit in a way and just mm. kind of toggle between the two. So I just tried to put myself in those shoes um, as much as I could. Mm-hmm. I mean, I yes, exactly. I, I had the podcast to I had much more, Phyllis was much more in the podcast, and we were able to, like I said, talk, Phyllis and I, and she was incredibly open. And then I had, you know, the ultimate, which is the, the only thing that I really needed was the script, which was what Georgia had had amazing piece of material that Georgia had written. So, you know, we took, there's definitely liberties, like, you know, the hair is not the same, I'm not playing exactly Phyllis, but she, I hopefully c- convey her beautiful essence most challenging scene I, I, I it's hard it, we, we had a lot of long scenes in the therapy office which uh, which you know five six page scenes of dialogue w- which were um, you don't really get to do in in you know movies and TV to just kind of sit there and talk and those were uh, those were difficult. I mean, especially Paul did a lot of the talking. <laughs> Marty just kind of listened. Well, and but they got but they got fairly emotional at times. Yeah, and yeah. there was also always subtext happening with yeah. these with these kinds of scenes where they're 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 layered in in a unique way, very verbal. But what's happening underneath is uh, trying to convey that kind of stuff, and then do it on a on a short shooting schedule with COVID protocols and you know the technical challenges of that. Uh, we had plenty things, plenty of things that made it maybe a little bit more challenging than normal. And as far as the ones that were the most enjoyable, um, yeah, I mean, one one of the moments that really made me laugh and was just madness. Uh, uh, Doctor Ike convinces Marty to has have his bar mitzvah again, and. The scene at the end of the episode where they're being hoisted up on the chairs, and it's such a contrast between Marty trying not to throw up, <laughs> uh, and then you look over at Ike, who's having the greatest time of his life. Uh, <laughs> it was it was just hilarious to watch Paul just soak up all the adulation as if it was his own party. Uh, it, it it made it was just fantastic. <laughs> 